Hope you guys are all doing well. What I want to talk about today, bang, we'll get right into it, is what I would do personally if I had to start from scratch today. If I lost all of my, magically, if I lost all of my relationships, all of my jobs, all of my work, and I had to start from scratch knowing what I know or what I've experienced since I started, but without any connections, um, what would I do today? That's what I want to talk to you about. Um, and not so much as a how-to or a strategy for you. I just want to share what, I guess, kind of what has worked for me and what I think, because I don't really know. If I had to start from scratch today in this, um, I don't know what the word is, climate, in, in this industry as it is today, I don't know how I'd fare. Maybe I, I wouldn't fare at all. Um, because a lot of where I've gotten to is because of when I started and how early I started. Um, and I think that plays a big part in it. So I really don't know how I would fare, but I want to share with you what I would do if I were to start over right now. Okay, so hypothetically, if I woke up tomorrow and I had no relationships, no work, no jobs, no placements, um, and I had to start from scratch, just entering into the industry. And we have to give some parameters. So let's say I, I, I sort of knew what the industry was, but I was starting out fresh. I would just stop and take inventory. I would, I would look at the industry itself. I would study it. I would take notes. Um, I would look at what's going on, who's doing what, and just try and learn as much as I possibly could. And at first I would do that organically. Uh, I would just use Google, YouTube, Facebook groups, forums, ask questions, social media, get involved. I would look at Instagram, um, see who's doing what, and I would use keyword searches all over the place to, you know, again, YouTube, Google, um, and, and searching on any platforms, tags, hashtags, for things that were related to the industry. I think a lot of reoccurring common things would come up. I would just learn as much as I could. And I say this now, I don't know how long I would take because it's not like we have a, yeah, a time frame. I just, I know that I would want to feel comfortable before proceeding. I would want to have an understanding of what was important in the industry, what was relevant, um, where, putting my time and energy and, and um, music and, and myself and my brand and my image and getting presence in an area would serve me the best. As an example, you know, complaining about stuff in a forum or a group does not help me in the least. Um, if anything, it's going to be damaging. So it's not time well spent in my opinion. So again, I would collect my music and I would proceed um, into areas that I thought could help benefit me. And even if it's not getting my music out there right away, it could be meeting people. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, your objective doesn't have to be immediate. Building a network is one part of the end goal. You know, building credibility. And there's a whole bunch of things I think that go into achieving that, that end goal. So that's the first thing I would do is just kind of take stock of everything going on in the industry, what's what's trending, what's um, needed, what's wanted, what's happening, um, you know, that, that kind of thing first and um, before reaching out to anybody or putting my music out there. I think he's pissed at me. Secondly, I would develop um, allies. I would look for people to network with in the industry and I would, I would look at in, in, at, in all facets of the industry. I wouldn't just be looking for libraries or people in the library. I would, I would look to um, develop relationships with fellow composers, with um, other musicians, people that had strengths that I don't have, that maybe I could collaborate with. Um, of course, I would look at publishers, um, music houses, trailer companies, um, editors, people in the film industry that aren't necessarily on the music side of it. Uh, just build a network of like-minded, good, genuine people. Um, I know that that is what I would do. And I can say that confidently because I know that that has been a very big part of what has helped me get to 
where I am in the past 15 plus years. So, so relationships would definitely be the second thing and that would be an absolute must. And really important to point out, not in a, hey, what can you do for me kind of way. And I've, I know I've said this a million times, a lot of you have heard me say it, um, but in a, hey, here's what I can bring to the table. Um, you know, how can we work together to build something bigger than each of us could do alone? Synergy, right? So one, education and understanding. Two, relationship development. Three, um, I would definitely make a uh, strong effort to meet people in person. No social media, no Zoom. I realize it's been very difficult the past two years, um, but things are starting to open back up. Um, and that has helped me, I, I can't even, you know, tell you how valuable it's been um, meeting people in person. I, I live here in central Canada and I've flown to the States several times to, um, you know, just strengthen and enhance those relationships and, and meet people that have been giving me work. Um, I've gone to places even just like NAM. It's, it's not like, you know, labels are flying me in to, you know, discuss a, a contract uh, out of my own pocket. I've made the effort to go places um, and, and meet people and get to know them in person. I can't tell you how valuable that is. So maybe something like, I've never personally been to the, the somebody on here know, uh, road, road Rally, right? Um, I've heard that that is an incredible networking opportunity. Uh, the PMC, the Production Music Conference, um, join the Production Music Association, and then you can attend the conference and network and meet people. I believe that's in September. Um, but if I'm wrong, I'll <laughs> definitely correct myself below or feel free to correct me. Um, even NAM, a few years ago I went to NAM and um, there was lots of panels that talked about our industry, the, the sync licensing production music industry, even at NAM. So um, not to mention you can meet brands and, and um, people that are selling the gear that we use and, and that kind of thing. So the point is just meet people in person. If you can go to coffee with somebody, a fellow composer in the, in the city you're li you live in or um, meetups, that kind of thing, it's just, uh, it's really handy. Uh, film festivals um, is another really cool place, but there's a lot of examples I can give you, but the idea is to meet people in person. It's so much better uh, if you can do it um, than, you know, an email or a or phone call or even a Zoom, Zoom meeting. And number four, and not necessarily in, in the order of fourth, but really important is I would develop a strategy, uh, a plan, a goal. So I kind of had an objective and I could develop a plan informed by what that end goal is. Make sense? Like if I'm gonna drive somewhere, or travel somewhere, I need to know where I'm going in order to best, uh, to make the most efficient, uh, practical, journey there, if that makes sense. I would kind of develop what it is that I wanted to achieve. Um, and again, I've always said my success or my definition of success is to be able to make a living in this industry. Relationships and to have, feel comfortable knowing I have enough work to support me and my family and, and all my financial responsibilities. So develop a goal, a strategy, and you can, you can timeline that, you can set that out, you know, in, in three months, I want to have achieved this. And maybe it's, you know, X amount of tracks, a number of tracks, or incrementally improve your production quality, learn to mix better, learn to play an instrument better, um, you know, maybe develop three solid relationships with music libraries, or get into a specific, it's really up to you, but the point is set goals, um, even long-term, what your end goal is, and, and kind of reverse engineer that, and figure out how you're gonna get there, who you need to speak to to get there, um, maybe what kind of budget you need to get there, because as I said, for example, if you're traveling and going to, to uh, conferences and panels and that kind of thing, there's gonna be some expenses, or maybe you need to invest in some gear, some soundproofing, um, a website, whatever it is, develop a plan, um, and have an idea of what you're trying to achieve, it'll make the whole thing so much easier if you if you know what you're, goal is really you just can't you just gonna lay there the whole time you want to get involved you want to get involved you want to tell them how rough this is and this next one I probably shouldn't be giving anybody advice on this because this is something quite honestly that I've struggled with myself for the past 
few years and I'm only just starting to kind of get things where I want them. And that is um, your brand identity, um, your image. In the beginning, I was, I thought it was a good strategy to, um, to say that I could write in all these kinds of different styles. And fast forward, you know, a few years, um, that's probably the worst thing I could have done. Um, ironically, I have written in a ton of different styles, all kinds of quirky, weird stuff. Um, but I know today that it would not help me to tell people or advertise that I can do all these different styles of music. I know that what's most valuable and I think presents me the best is to have a reel, which I, which I do, uh, of my best work, of what I am a most passionate about, enjoy the most, so I can infuse that music with, with what I really, um, as I said, am, am passionate about. Um, but I keep it, I keep it simple. If someone says, "What can you do? What styles do you write?" I have a couple, but that's that's really what I'll give them is just my best work. I, I won't tell them, oh, I can also do this and this and this and this. Maybe there's a conversation that happens after you're in the door or after you've developed a relationship with them um, to say, oh yeah, by the way, I can play accordion or whatever the case. I, I say that because I actually got, got a job um, in advertising. My first job in advertising was because someone heard me play accordion. Another story. Anyway, the point is a brand, develop your image so that when you're dealing with somebody, you're talking with somebody, or somebody visits any of your social media profiles, they have an idea of what you offer, what you're about, what you can do, what you want. Um, you know, you're look, if you're looking to get into something um, or you can provide value, maybe they there's something that catches their eye and, and they like about you or your image and they'll be willing to work with you. And it helps if you can tell them kind of what you're looking for too. Right? You're a composer, you specialize in production music, uh, or you specialize in EDM. Maybe you're a mix engineer and you're looking to mix other um, other people's work, or maybe you're you're a, a, a session player, a guitar, keys, uh, maybe you arrange horns, and that's, you know, you're looking to help collaborate. And the point is, make it clear what you do um, and build that into your, your brand and your image and make it easily recognizable. So that, that's something I would definitely do too, is, is make, you know, develop a whole brand and image. And I think I'll close it by saying, um, I think one of the most, uh, what? You have something to say? I think one of the most, um, one of the biggest lessons I learned is how much of a business this this industry really is like when I started I was just you know just writing music and, and throwing it on a hard drive and um, you know throwing it out to all these libraries and just blindly soliciting everywhere um, and when I started to earn a little bit of money years later um, I still wasn't I still wasn't treating it like a business you know I wasn't thinking about um, you know income and expenses and gears gear um, taxes um, marketing average like everything that goes along with a business had I, had I started had I started any other business like a, a you know a lawn care or landscape business um, you know anything like that I I would have followed these other very specific steps but it took me a long time to kind of wrap my head around around this being a proper business um, and you know creating efficiencies and, and um, you know streamlining things and setting up um, you know processes, uh, processes, processes, and um, really just appreciating that as much as I love what I do, it is, it is work. And there's, so that is something I would do sooner than later if I had to start all over tomorrow, is that I would set up as a business. Uh, and I think it goes without saying, because I'm sure some people are wondering, of course, I would register with a pro right away as well. So I'm sure after I've posted this, I'm gonna remember probably 50 things that I also would do if I had to start out tomorrow. Uh, but I'm gonna rely on you guys to comment below. Um, what would you do if you had to start tomorrow from scratch, you had no relationships, you, you 
if you've gained anything in the past, however long you've been at this, and you had to start from the very first step uh, tomorrow, what would you do? What would be your steps? And would you do anything different? Would you do anything new? Has there been anything to date that you wish you hadn't done that, that lost you a lot of time or, or momentum? Um, in any case, I wish you guys all the best, no matter where you are on your journey. And um, just keep at it. It's a long game, and uh, I just I, I want to see you guys win. And um, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.